Hello. Today we're going to be exploring the subject of analog horror. If you don't know what analog horror is, remember my video Maple County? That was an example of it. Analog horror is a genre, or a subgenre, that exists in the world of the era of the VHS. Kind of. A little bit. So analog is relating to or using signals or information represented by a continuously variable physical quantity such as spatial positioning, voltage, etc. Or analog, a person or thing seen as comparable to another. Which is oddly interesting. Oddly interesting. It's interesting, oddly enough. The oddly thing is that that is interesting. That is interesting because it pertains to what we're talking about today. And the alternates. The alternates are kind of the idea behind, um, if you remember this video. This video. The Mandela Catalog. This was made by a one Alex Kister. We are currently receiving countless reports of an unidentified hostile organism that we'll refer to as alternates. A lot of them from what I've seen, start from this informational type of video. Which is, this is actually like 1950s propaganda videos from the government to tell you how to survive an atomic bomb. That's the kind of videos that I get the vibe of. So this is not just analog in the days of VHS, this is old analog in the terms of archival footage and stuff like that. You know, things that are so far in the past but baked into the subconscious because they are effectively propaganda and they're supposed to be baked into the subconscious to get you to think one way or another. So to use this as a medium to tell a story that is a horror story is an effective use because the technology is inherently jank and kind of the horror comes from it being jank and also the information being presented to you that there is an entity that looks just like you that is trying to take over your life and when it finds you it will make an almost perfect facsimile of you or it has already made a perfect facsimile of your parents or loved ones or friends or neighbors or colleagues they could be anyone Anywhere, at any time, even me. But I'm not, ding. So let's look into analog horror because there's so much more to analog horror than just the Mandela catalog or Maple County. Do not believe his lies, the Mandela catalog. Ass film theorists, hey, you know, you do, you do professional research. I'm here to do my research, which is because I say it in a more authoritative tone, I'm gonna I'm gonna let people assume that I know what I'm talking about, which I have not been able to say properly this whole video. Let me look at something that I found, which is called Blue Channel Thalassin. You or a loved one are suffering from any of the following symptoms. Lack of feeling, emotional outbursts, fog of the mind, or memory loss. This may be a sign of onset AED or advanced emotional deterioration. Today, seven in 10 people over the age of 21 report experiencing emotional degradation severe enough to hinder everyday tasks, such as workplace performance, social interaction, and general well-being. Emotional stability is required for a functional and healthy mind. Correcting AED used to require rigorous testing and invasive procedures costing time, effort, and money. Today, the solution is thalassin. Using our modern understanding of brain mapping, thalassin is able to reproduce the emotions necessary for any occasion. Not only does thalassin restore lost emotion, but patients have reported emotions at a higher and more consistent quality than ones produced non-chemically. Included in every pack of thalassin are these common emotions. Happiness, sadness, uh -oh. anger, fear, and relief. Also, look out for over-the-counter options such as jealousy, hope, frustration, and pride. Tired of only experiencing... Where, where's the horny option? Or maybe interested in expanding your emotional palate. Cutting-edge brain mapping technology has not only allowed us to refine existing emotions, but has also allowed for the creation of new emotions and emotional experiences. With Thalassin Plus, experience emotions beyond previous natural capabilities. These new emotions include degrance, humber, <laughs> nage, dorselessness, <laughs> 
Andrick, Ver Verinic, Hornish, Hard, Time, Trantiveness, Toulouse, Rick. To experience the power of Thalassin, call the number on your screen now before supply- THAT'S WHERE THOSE PICTURES CAME FROM! There was a post on Reddit like forever ago that was a mixture of those emotions and it was like a big post and I thought they made it. That's how things don't- like if, if it doesn't get credited, it doesn't go anywhere and I don't know who makes it. Goose works! I've seen those before, my god. Trantiveness. I love Toulouse. I want to experience Toulouse. Uh, like a, a heaping helping of Toulouse mixed with a little bit of uh, Trantiveness. Onland, Loric. They didn't even mention the Onland. I want some Onland. Loric. Anyway, this is like well done, Gooseworks. Uh, really fun stuff. But yeah, no, that's another example of what analog horror is. It's like an old- This blue screen has such a strong impact in my memory. It may not have the same impact in your memory. Encoding delay? Why? That seems to be fine. Yeah, so this is the kind of concept behind analog horror. A lot of things exist in this world. And there's actually a playlist that someone named The Analog Collector has made that kind of collects a lot of different analog horror things. Senses Chimpy Chippa's band commercial. Okay, what is this? Okay, lads, let's take this from the top. <clears throat> Do you want to know what's driving everyone bananas? Well, come on down to Chimpy Chippa's. Enjoy our wide range of milkshakes, burgers, and fries, and we'll have you coming back for more. Are you as excited as Chippa the Chip is to uh, eat all of our... Uh... Shit. Sorry, sorry. Bloody monkey. Just... Who cares? Just... We're, we're gonna do it again. Just give me another go. From the top. Do you want to know what's driving up one for not? Chimpy Chippers and our iconic Chimpy Cheeseburger. Due to attack on our weekly specials, so what are you waiting for? Because Chipper the Chimp is waiting for you. Look, I know you guys spend time on making this monkey thing, but has no one realised how fucking creepy it looks? Or is it just me? Because I can tell you right now, I'd never take my daughter to... So the, I, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say this is an example of something that isn't necessarily one of the scariest things I've ever seen. In fact, personally, I didn't think it was scary at all. However, I'm not here to just shit all over Spring Talk Pictures creations. That's not what I'm here about. I, I want to dissect why this doesn't work and the other ones work really well. Because I, I know there's a video, not this one, every analog horror video. Here we go. This year we're celebrating 35 years in business. Did you know we've come up with six all new value combo coupons? And if you sign up for our email club, you'll save 15% off. Well, that's a little, that's a little on the nose. Did you know? <laughs> okay, so uh, funny, whatever, whatever. It's a parody. But I think, like, if a good parody needs to understand the exact essence of what does work for something, even if you're making fun of it, you need to understand why it works for the people that it works for to get there. And this kind of does that. Yeah, one second. What is this? Oh, I s did I watch this one? I think this might be the one I was thinking of.
Okay, so this is an example of a good parody, right? It knows what it's making fun of. I think the comments are just like, you, when your parody is so well made, it wraps around to being scary again. That's kind of what it is, because that was by itself unsettling. And analog horror can be really unsettling if it's done right. And you can do a parody that's so good that it does wrap around all the way to unsettling. By the way, this is a great video. How audio enhances the horror of Five Nights at Freddy's. Great video. The other thing that I want to show you is something that kind of goes beyond just analog horror. There's a video by the Mystery Flesh Pit guy, girl, I don't know. The person who does the Mystery Flesh Pit also has a YouTube channel. I don't know if you knew this is called Mystery Flesh Pit National Pork Park Park Historic Archive. And the first video that they ever put out was this one. And this one's just like, it's fascinating because it is technically, I think, in the genre of analog horror. But then again, the whole premise of the Mystery Flesh Pit, which if you don't know about, you should look it up, is kind of in the same vein as why this analog horror as a concept is scary. It's something rooted in the past because the story of the Mystery Flesh Pit is all told from the perspective of articles and memorabilia and little informational placards that are from the era of when the Mystery Flesh Pit existed and before the disaster of the Mystery Flesh Pit. And so you uncover the universe through in-universe clues that occurred after the event occurred. And this is one of them. The following message is transmitted at the request of the Texas Department of Public Safety, the United States Geological Survey, and the Permian Basin Recovery Corporation. The United States Geological Survey has issued a geobiological activity advisory for the following counties. Cook County, Gumption County, Howard County, Midland County, Sterling County, and Hill, 2.18 a.m. Central Daylight Time, at 10.48 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Seismic EKG monitoring stations detected muscle contractions originating from the northeastern limb of the Permian Basin superorganism. This event is expected to cause moderate to severe damage to property, utility services, and infrastructure. Residents are advised to seek shelter immediately. If you do not have this, you have cognitive ability, limited precognition, memory loss, and muscle cramps. These effects are temporary and will stop once the event has concluded. Do not ask for yourself to have a So this this is cool, right? This came out uh, December of 2020. It is now 2022, so this was over a year ago. This is actually before a lot of these analog horror videos came out. It's not the first analog horror thing by a long shot, but it is one of the earlier ones, and it has a great example of why it and a lot of the analog horror things work so well. It's something that you know, even if it's an emergency, you know this screen. You know this. And because you know it, even if it's something bad, you can be used to it and you can understand it. However, there's already strange things that are happening in this emergency broadcast that really mark it out as something that you should pay attention to and something that is not what you expect. And that is the basis of what makes it so kind of creepy because it's unsettling, because it's something that you expect to know and it's not what it is. It's not a tornado warning. It's not a, like a, a earthquake warning. No, it's geobiological activity advisory. That makes you go, what the fuck is this? That. You don't know what that is, but you know those words, geobiological. So, okay, geological, biological, something that's on the scale of geology and biology. That's weird at first, and that's like the whole reason why the mystery flesh bit works so well. But also, just like the rest of it going on as it, as it continues, 
The fact that it is a recording of a screen and you have the environmental things happening that are kind of coinciding with the message that is being relayed and it's rooted in reality, right? It's rooted in reality and that's kind of the bigger point of it. Like it's, it's rooted in something that could potentially be real. You see these counties, you know roughly the size of what a county is in a state if you're from America. This thing, whatever the frick it is, it, it's so big and you hear them talking about how there's an activity warning off the northeastern limb of the permian basin superorganism all of these are pretty much new words to anybody that's ever read english and grew up knowing english all of these are pretty new but you know the combinations of them and you know the basis of the context that you're getting it and all of them spell bad news so this event is expected to cause moderate to severe damage also like understating what it could possibly do and just like the list of things and the things happening in the noise like the, you could say a lot about the production quality and like the different things and the, the actual realism of it but the fact that it is there and this happening all aids to the idea that it's kind of real that's that's the other thing about analog horror. It taps into this thing where you don't know if it's not real. You can play a lot of horror games and you know that they're not real because you're playing a game. But when you're watching an informational video like this, you don't automatically know that it's not real if you've never been exposed to something like this before. And that also is what makes analog horror really creepy. You don't know if this informational broadcast about people that aren't people, that kind of look like people, is real or not. You know that it's probably not real, but it seems presented in a way that could be real. Especially if it's like that game, Maple County, that is a police instructional video. And someone would only go to the trouble of making an instructional video if it was something that actually needed to be instructed, right? So there's a sense of realism there. And then you get these things like, uh, you might experience headaches, nausea, okay, fever, hallucinations, okay, dizziness, mild seizures, okay, temporary changes in vision, reduced or enhanced cognitive abilities like <laughs> limited precognition like these things like lumping the real in with the not real i think is what really hones in this idea kind of hiding the unreal in the real and that's what makes mystery flesh pits so cool is because there's so much unreal buried in real of what it could potentially be and like that kind of like twisting of reality is where this gets cool now with this with thalison like the trantiveness you, uh, it's it's great well, this isn't the original one. It, it's great because it starts out with something that is kind of crazy, but you're like, okay, that's that's kind of funky. You know, a medicine that gives you emotions. Okay, all right, I get it. Not scary by itself, but it already set up a universe where it could then put dorselessness into it. Freaking dorselessness. Ew. <laughs> so I think that that's kind of like my 101 about why analog horror is what it is and why it can work. So what I'm gonna do now is watch some analog horror videos. What about kids' safety tips? What is this? Andy living good. The Church of the Future Light presents fun safety tips. After school safety. What do you do when a stranger approaches you? Don't speak to them. Do not go with them. Run away and tell an adult you trust. Okay, good advice so far. What do you do when your parents come to pick you up? Is it really your parents? Look for their eyes. See the light. Listen to them speak. Do you hear the scratching? Let them take you somewhere fun. Playtime safety. Do not hide in places where you can get trapped. Places like old refrigerators can seal you in. That's no fun. Hide in fun places like the doorway. Keep your mouth open. Do not close your eyes. They live inside the doorway. You will have fun. You will laugh and laugh. You will stay. Home safety. After your parents tuck you in, open your window. Children should not sleep with their windows closed. When you hear the voices, go with them to the doorway. It will be a fun game. Oh, all right. Have fun. Okay, ow. 
So this was not bad, but I think this is one of those ones that leans too hard too quickly and isn't rooted in enough reality because I think it was good there with like, don't talk to strangers, but it was like already presented in a weird way that made it seem like disturbing and wrong. And I don't think that works out as well as it could if it was something that was more basic uh, from the get go or not more basic, but more, like I said, rooted in reality and was kind of like, like it's one of those things where less is more, right? In horror, if you show the monster, I don't know what this is. If you show the monster, it ruins any potential scare of the unknown, right? Because you know it. And as soon as you know something, you know what it is. All right, well, good job. You just fell over. I think another good example of analog horror, or at least kind of this genre, I don't know if they would want to be lumped in with this, but if you remember Discover My Body, so this game I played a while ago, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. The game itself is very creepy. So the, the reason that was so creepy is because of the way that he makes things. It harkens the design of analog horror with like a lot of pixelation and a lot of like uncertainty about what you're seeing and a lot of old technology and stuff like that. But there's just like a certain blend of it that uh, I think his name's Yames does that really combines a lot of elements that I love about analog horror and puts it into a package that it's just an overall very creepy thing. But the thing about Discover My Body, and if you go watch that video that I did of it, or go play the game yourself, better yet, it's presented like it's normal. And I think that's the key. So when you get to the part where he's starting to flower other brains off of like his bones or something, he's acting like it's perfectly normal. The incredible pain of that other step where he just starts screaming is presented like it's perfectly normal and it's all part of the plan and if there's a plan then you can follow the plan and you can survive but if you don't follow the plan they're going to find you and you will be defenseless against them so just stick to the plan and everything will be just fine and that's what makes things scary I didn't point out anything specifically of that that makes things scary, but the combination of it should be pretty obvious. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to go to uh, some more of this um, Mandela catalog. Because I really liked what was going on with the Mandela catalog. Like, I don't know if it was like the best made, but I kind of want to look at some other things around there. Okay, this is exhibition. It's a longer one. Huh. What am I looking at? What did I just see? Oh my god! <laughs> I was just skipping through this a little bit and I just saw... That! You know, I don't like that! I'm not gonna lie, I don't like that. I mean, that's very simple, but at the same time, I don't like it! I think that's analog horror. You just look at it and you go, I don't like it! I don't like that! Could I have less of that, please? And then it gives you more of that, right? That's what it does. <laughs> anyway, this is like some up. Lixian, can you crank that up for me? Make it more legible, uh, uh, hearable. What? The, the death of Mark? I, I saw the death of Mark. Did you see the death of Mark? I saw the death of Mark. To <laughs> analog television and mirrors. All right, so that's the story. Don't look at analog TVs. No CRTs around here. All right, cool. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's face it. Us parents know how time-consuming it is to keep an eye on our young children. While working is essential, they must receive attention from us so that they know we love them too. Some of us may rely on key things that keep them entertained, like toys, walks in a stroller, or even cartoons on the family television. Be cautious with what channels your children view on the television, since you never know what harmful content they may be seeing. Your children may be viewing elements of violent content, sexual content, graphic content,
scary imagery. Scary imagery. If you hear your child screaming or crying in front of the television, wait until your child stops making noise before entering the room. You will. I know what to do in this situation. Nothing. What a good parent am I. I don't see no baby. I don't see no baby. Hi. Hey. Hi, uh, you've taken some delaminin, whatever it is. Hello? Every time. How did I know this was going to happen? Every time. So that ends my exploration of analog horror. There's a lot of different things that you can do with analog horror. It doesn't all have to be trantiveness. It doesn't all have to be Toulouse or on Onland. It doesn't have to be that or Loric or any of these or even Dorselessness. But it's fun and it's hard to get right. But it's a cool genre subgenre, whatever. It's cool. And also, if you didn't hear me talking about this on Distractable, um, there's a subreddit called Distressing Memes that has a little bit of this feeling. We didn't talk about analog horror on the podcast. Uh, if you want to get the episode, I'll link it in the description below where we talk about this. It's a really good episode. Um, but it's just like distressing memes. Ugh. See, this is exactly what I was talking about with the alternates and stuff, shit like that. But distressing memes is is great. Like, legitimately, we go in depth in this on uh, the podcast. Link is in the description, but it's it's just this shit, you know. Anyway, it's just, <laughs> it's just this, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, having fun memes, so cool. But it's the same thing, right? You know what a meme is, even if you don't find memes funny on a general basis. But it's just like taking that concept of what you know and turning it around into something that you are unsure of and is unsettling is great. It has the energy of uh, me and the boys at 2 a.m. looking for beans. Like, <laughs> I don't know why it's got that energy. But this is somehow not terrifying at all. This sounds great. This sounds like a good time, but unfortunately, the other ones do not. So anyway, I'm done with this video. If you want to try more analog horror stuff, go look it up and go tell me what you think is the best one and what really dissects what it means to be scary because it's not an easy thing to nail down. Oddly enough, for a guy that has played a lot of horror games and like I've done some spooky stuff in the past, it's not an easy thing to nail down. So thank you. If you want to listen more about our conversations about this kind of stuff and our personal experiences of scary stories that we have had in our lives, it, which, one of which I have actually experienced just like a few weeks ago, where I could have sworn that I heard Amy talking to me, 
directly in front of me in a dark bedroom, when in fact she was all the way across the house behind me. I could have sworn I heard her voice from the darkness in front of me. So anyway, link to that is in the description below. Go to the click right down there. Have fun. It's a good, it's a good episode. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Let me know what analog horror you find and what scary things scare you. Thank you. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.